congratulations uh, to both of you just for making it through, you know, this whole <laughs> series. Seriously, pats on the back. Thank um, you very much. In retrospect, you look back at, I mean, you've been from day one mm. uh, in these films. What has these, you know, 10 years, of, you know, meant to you? Tom, do you want to start? It's very hard to, to, to put a sentence to that. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's been my life, really, for the last 10 years. I've grown up with, uh, with everyone on the set, uh, the cast and crew. Um, <clears throat> and I joined a young boy and I've left a, a young man, which is kind of weird because I've lost a bit in the middle and it all seems like a little bit of a blurred into one. But, uh, you know, certainly in the, in the last few years, looking back at it, it's been a, an incredible journey. And I'm yeah, incredibly lucky to, to, to have been a part of it. And, you know, Jason, just being a part of this and looking at some of the actors that you've had the, you know, opportunity to work with you know was there ever a point where you kind of stepped back and went good lord you know? yeah i pinch myself every day most films you complain when you sit around the actors the joke not very funny but it's in joke amongst actors is that you don't get paid to act you get paid to wait but in fact on these films because they're big special effects films there's an enormous amount of time sitting around waiting and when you're sitting around and listening to the likes of maggie smith and alan rickman and michael gambon and Jim Broadbent and Bill Nye, and, you know, the list goes on and on, just swapping stories with each other. I would have waited all day and all night yeah, for I, free. Don't tell Warner Brothers, but I would have waited <laughs> for free. Have they paid you for the next one yet, or is that all the best? Oh, you the next one. We're not allowed to talk about the next one. I think it's a seal. <laughs> okay, but you still, still get that paycheck, though. That's what I'm getting oh, at. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, to play, you know, both of you, to play uh, these characters that are so deliciously evil, <laughs> how much fun, seriously? I think we have probably have the most fun of, of the bunch, really, don't we? Possibly. Actually, we got a journey. I mean, it's that's one journey, of the yeah. fabulous things is that they started out really obnoxious. I mean, Draco in the first film was just a snotty little git who you despised. And then you see his father, who is worse, and clearly bullies him. And you begin to understand why the kid is the way he is. And then uh, I think what's satisfying for the audience, and was great for me, the actor, by the time you get to Deathly Hallows Part 1, Lucius is a horrible, emasculated, shambling husk of the man you first met. And... and for me, that's just meat and potatoes. That was a fabulous thing to, to get to do on screen. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Both of you have great, yeah. great, great character <clears throat> arcs that start from one end and go to a completely Completely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, must be wonderful as an actor to be able to have that opportunity. It is fantastic. Like, I've, uh, I've I reveled in the first five years of being a snotty git, as you delightfully put it, uh, I think. Um, and, and yeah, it's really nice to actually step behind the scenes and see why he is like that and also see the family bonds between Draco and his family. and. Uh, and to see him in the positions that he's been put in over the last couple of years, it's been been fascinating. I remember reading the sixth one, uh, the book that's back in the day, and, and, and reveling in it, and, and you know looking forward to, to Draco's journey from there. And obviously, it continues in the in the seventh. And amazing for you too, Tom, because in the opening scene that we see in this Deathly Hollows Part One, mm. um, you're sitting at this grand table with all these yes. evil people. You're <laughs> the youngest guy in the room. There. Yes, I recall. So you know, I kind of got repeat my question when I asked Jason, like, are you sitting there going? Oh my goodness, who I, am I sitting here with? <laughs> I am petrified. I was petrified. We were there for a couple of weeks, and the first two days, I, I kept myself to myself and kept my mouth shut. Yeah, because I'm sitting around a table of, of you know British acting legends and, and you know my heroes or my idols. Um, so it was a bit bizarre, but needless to say, as, as Jason beautifully demonstrates, uh, most of them are all wonderful people that are very easy to talk to and as soon as you get they're past... British, they're just working actors, roll the sleeves up and get on with it. Nobody's a legend once you spend five minutes in That's makeup. That's it. Like it's, and it's bizarre, isn't it? Because that, that whole thing, I remember spending six years to muster up the courage to speak to Alan about Prince of Thieves and, and, when, and when I did, he was more than open and happy to talk to me about it. So that was, uh, yeah, that was Now, didn't good you times. step on his cape at some point? Yes. That was <laughs> in, in the previous film, yes, I do. Uh, there was a, a little thing because he's... His, his cloak obviously sweeps along like a bit of a wedding dress, and uh, Master Yates was, was keen for me to get right up behind him, and naturally I, uh, I trod on his cape, giving him mild whiplash, and, and then uh, he forgave me, though. it was all good. Well, that's good, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> now, of course, you know, the Malfoy's pre pretty, pretty evil guys, but nobody takes the cake like Voldemort. Well, oh so. my goodness, and you know, I've spoken to Ray Fiennes before, gentle man, such a sweet man, Oh my God, does he ever take this to the limit? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's it like to work with somebody like that and just to watch him transform into what he does? Well, most of the transformation takes place on the motherboard somewhere away from us because uh, he has a nose when we shoot, obviously. <laughs> uh, but Ray, you know, he's a phenomenal actor. And one, one of the great things about acting on the Harry Potter films is that if acting is the process of imagining you are in a situation, they make it so easy for you. They build these spectacular sets and the other actors are so brilliant, like Ray, who becomes this cobra-like uh, evil personified that it makes it easy to be terrified of him. It makes it easy to cringe and, and uh, 
you know, no um, go moist though. with terror. Yeah, because yeah, he takes you down a few pegs in this one. He does that fantastic Just, thing. Yeah. I think he's going to kill me at my dining room table in front of my contemporaries. He snaps my wand, which the wizard is both symbolic and painful. <laughs> and uh, it's a, it was a very enjoyably horrendous moment for me. Yeah, and yeah, for you to work with somebody like that. Yeah, too. I mean, it's, it's, it's terrifying. Actually, this is the first film that I actually got a chance to work with. I haven't actually met Rafe before this film. Uh, I think I'd seen him briefly at a premiere, but this was the first time actually seeing him sort of face to face. And of course, he was in his full uh, getup, like Jason says. He has a nose, but it's still it's still rather alarming to to see the the the, the makeup and and the whole uh, and the whole suit. And um, yeah, like you said, he's a charming, lovely gentleman. But but very quickly, he snaps into this uh, whole other creature. Which and it's the same with with Jason and, and Helena. Actually, it's it's hilarious to watch these three have a conversation about uh, a film that they you know once watched or something and then literally they roll cameras and all three of them turn into complete psychos so it's a uh, it's truly <laughs> enjoyable to watch it really is. oh helen is fantastic oh, oh yeah. my god <laughs> yeah true yeah the best psycho i think yeah I've well you put those three in a room you've got a real show <laughs> i could just imagine so you know this with this all this coming to an end it's got to be bittersweet for you guys you know i know it's nice to move on to some other challenges and other things and you both you know are you're i know you're moving on to other films and you've done so many other things but what's it like to kind of have to put this behind you and it's it's done it's not really done is it we're Luckily here talking not. to you there's a film coming out there'll be another film coming out in july at some point you only feel the loss of something when it's no longer in your life when mm. it's still in our lives uh, and it will be for a while to come i suspect that we'll be talking about these and talking about release of them in different formats until i'm old and gray and possibly dead <laughs> have you been to the harry potter park in uh, florida well, in Orlando, yes, I, cool. I thoroughly, uh, thoroughly recommend anyone who hasn't. It's a, it's a whole world in itself. It's, a it's missing a Malfoy house of horror. Well said. That's a good point. I hadn't yeah. thought about that. Yeah. Well, I think they'll, they'll, there's room to, you it's know. It's true. They're going to expand. <laughs> so very quickly, did you uh, keep anything from the set? Well, I couldn't possibly yeah, say since we're not allowed to keep anything to say. <laughs> but I'm hoping that the Dementors don't come around to my house and do a full search. <laughs> well, congratulations. It's lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much. Best of luck. This is such a great film. I really enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Great talking to you. To you.